is when they broke the unbreakable reptile. <clears throat> You're assigned to SCP-682. They tell you there are three laws of nature you must believe. One, there's no such thing as immortality. Everything will die eventually, be it from murder, accidents, or just old age. Two, everything has a weakness. If everything can die, then everything can be made to die. Anything can be killed. Three, under no circumstances can you believe, even for a second, even subconsciously, that SCP-682 can't be killed. Of course, those apply to more to the researchers trying to terminate SCP-682, but I still believe them wholeheartedly. I wasn't there to try to terminate 682, though. I... I am... was... a psychologist. Sent in by the Foundation to try to study the reptile. And make a psychological profile of it. Essentially, I was trying to understand how the mind of pure destruction and hatred worked. It was part of a new initiative in the Foundation, trying to approve the containment procedures of sentient SCPs through understanding them psychologically. And, and maybe even find a way to make them more complacent and reduce the number of attempted breaches. Everyone said I was mad when I requested SCP-682. Maybe I am. Maybe I wouldn't have been here if I wasn't mad. But, there, but here I was every day for a month. Staring at a giant, murderous, hard-to-destroy reptile in a vat of acid. And I think it was staring back at me. I knew SCP-682 would never cooperate with questioning or knowingly give me any insight into its psyche. So I resolved to sit and watch it until it started talking to me. Every day I sat with a pen and notebook, watching the reptile. And when he had nothing better to do, he watched me back. It felt like I was Claire Starling, starring at... Hannibal Lecter instead of Hannibal, except Hannibal at least talked. I knew 682 found me and all the other researchers disgusting. I knew I wanted all life on Earth dead. But I wonder if maybe, just maybe, curiosity would get the better of him. We'll never know because one day, the sun decided that it wanted all life on Earth dead too. On that day, I stood in disbelief in a doorway just barely out of, of the reach of the sunlight, staring out into the sun-bleached world. Heat charged the bare earth. Reds and oranges danced and pulsated, where there were once greens and blues. Friends and co-workers were melting, turning the landscape into a nightmare, surreal painting. Yet, all I could stare at was 682. Flesh melted off the reptile's back almost as fast as it could regenerate it. Maybe faster. It smelled like burnt, rotting flesh and hatred, and sounded like tar bubbling and boiling in the dip deepest parts of hell. What terrified me in that moment more than the containment breach, more than the melted people around me, more than the hateful star, was that no matter what ad adaptations it tried, the reptile was still melting. And despite myself, everything I'd held in faith worked for despite the three natural laws that I'd held higher than any regulation, rule, or religion. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe that SCP-682 was dying. After several failed adaptations, 682 resorted to piling an already melted flesh on top of itself curling up as small as possible, 
in an effort to avoid being exposed to more light. It huddled under more of the mass of wriggling flesh that melted off its back. And even as it seemed the flesh was trying to get away, curled up under an umbrella of its own melted back. Shying away from any sunlight that threatened to touch 68, touch it, 682, almost looked scared. The reptile must have noticed me staring at it, because it then did the one thing I wanted to do for weeks. It spoke to me. I don't want your pity, human. It turned to look at me, ignoring the sunlight melting the tip of its snout to do so. Aren't you happy? You finally found a way to kill me. Isn't that what every disgusting human in this wretched place wanted? Not like this. I finally found my voice. All I wanted, all the Foundation ever wanted, was to protect humanity. Killing you at the cost of humanity itself? That's not a victory. That's the worst defeat we, we could have had. Then my anger arose along with my voice. Aren't you happy? Almost every living thing on, on Earth is dying. Isn't that what you wanted? 682 may have chuckled, or maybe it was just the boiling of melted flesh, but even then, but even through all that heat, the reptile's voice still sent a chill up my spine. I know death. I revel in death. I want it. death for every disgusting creature that lives. But this. 682 snarled at the flesh, hissing like a snake. This is worse than death. Worse than life. Worse than anything either of us could imagine. Even for something as revolting as you, this is not the punishment I would wish. Is that why you're coming back inside? I don't know. I don't know why I said it. Or why I kept talking after I saw the anger flare up in Northdale's eyes. You hate all life. Does that include yourself? Do you think this death or not death is a fitting punishment for you? I knew I was signing my own death certificate. 682's hatred eclipsed its survival instinct, and it slowly got up and lumbered towards me, dragging the flesh on its back with it. In hindsight, I should have run. I should have at least closed the door. I still can't figure out why I didn't. The reptile collapsed before it got back inside, before it could even get close enough to hurt me. More and more of its body melted and its regeneration tried desperately to keep up. It must, I must have been most sane, or maybe it was just a pea of melting, melting flesh, but I, I swear I saw a tear fall from 682's eyes. Does it hurt? It was all I could think to say. A stupid question, really, and one I should have never asked. 682's answer surprised and terrified me. Not the way you think it does. You and your termination attempts have caused me far greater pain. The reptile shifted under the weight of its own melted flesh, turning to look right, look, turning to look at me right in the eyes. Do you want another tidbit for your database, little scientist? I'll give you one. Every one of your attempts to kill me has been excruciatingly painful, but this but that's nothing compared to the pain of regenerating after each one. It seems that part of my curse is to feel twice the pain while healing than what I felt from the injury. My mind raced through every termination attempt on 682. A 
every painful procedure, every excruciating moment, the foundation had put it through. I didn't even know a quarter of them, but I already wanted to hurl. But this is nothing like that. The reptile continued. The melting doesn't hurt at all. Not physically. And regeneration is more, little more than a tingle. No, the only pain I feel is for knowing what I'm coming and what I have to admit to myself. Six, eight, two inch closer. I should have left. I should have closed the door. I definitely should have asked any other questions. What are you becoming? I choked out. And what do you have to admit? The reptile dragged itself to within centimeters of the door. I still couldn't look away. I still couldn't believe what I was seeing. I have to admit that you were right. 6A2 snarled. That deep down, there's no living thing I hate more than myself. That every day I wished your next attempt to kill me would succeed. And I could finally pass into internal damnation. That maybe melting into, into an undying pile of flesh is the only punishment I could truly deserve. As for what I'm becoming... It said, finally pushing up from its, from its crouch, that should become obvious soon enough. Oh god, how do I even describe the sound it made? It was like a cry of pain and a sigh of relief. A scream of hatred and a spout of pure joy all rolled into one. 682 threw the flesh out of it, shielding it off its back. Stood on its hind, leg, hind legs and screamed at the sun. As long as I live, I'll never forget seeing 682 melt and regenerate and melt constantly as the sun beat down on it. The pile of flesh grew bigger and bigger as the reptile shed its melting skins, one after another, each one wriggling and writhing as if it was alive. I think I know what hell looks like. All I could do was stare in horror as SCP-682 threw layer after layer of melted skin off its body. I've seen 682 survive tortures and mutilations crafted by the most sadistic minds on Earth, and yet this, this was more horrific than any, than all of them combined. It was like the sun was fighting SCP-682's regeneration to see which was faster, and 682 was helping the sun. Suddenly, I was sitting back, and the door was closed in front of me. The hell are you doing? An MTF shouted at me. There is an XK in progress, and 682 broke containment. We have orders to shelter in place, so we can do fuck all about it. And you're just standing there gawking at the doorway while whatever the hell that? Hey, you okay? When you're assigned to SCP-682... They tell you there's three law of natures you must believe. One, there's no such thing as immortality. Everything will die eventually, be it from murder, accidents, or old or just old age. Two, everything has a weakness. If everything can die, then everything then anything can be made to die. Anything can be killed. Three, under no circumstances. Can you believe, even for a second, even subconsciously, that SCP-682 cannot die? On that day, as I stared blankly at the MTF, all I could say was three words. Three words that on any other day would have been cause for a great celebration the Foundation had ever seen. Three words that, on the day of all days, were absolutely terrifying. SCP-682 is dead.
little scientist. Are you there? I don't hate you anymore, little scientist. The sun is so beautiful. I want to share it with you. Won't you come out and watch the sun with me?